Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May be seated. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to be back with you this morning. Uh, this past uh, week, I was in a wedding last uh, Saturday morning, and I unfortunately caught a bad cold among all those people. Tested for COVID, and uh, the test came back uh, negative. But I uh, do not want to share this cold with anybody, so. Uh, I'm not going to hang out in, in the back after the uh, service and shake hands. I'll follow out the light and head back around so I can keep my distance from you. You do not want this cold, believe me. It is no fun. A couple of announcements uh, this morning that uh, we need to make. Uh, next Sunday, after our service, we need to have a, a session meeting to uh, decide on a couple Items. One, one of the things we're thinking about is we keep hearing that COVID is on the rise again, so uh, we're going to uh, evaluate uh, what's happening in, in the world of uh, COVID and, and make a decision on as to whether or not to go back to our uh, uh, COVID restrictions uh, starting uh, next week. So uh, I'll be talking with session members uh, this week and, and make that decision and then after the uh, service next Sunday we'll, we'll go over a couple other items. So session uh, we'll meet next Sunday after after the service. I'd like to take in new members. I'm, I'm looking at August 21st as uh, the potential date to bring them in. So if you uh, know of anyone who's been coming and has uh, expressed interest, uh, let them know. I'll be contacting those people that I can think of. But if there's someone I'm missing, uh, we'd like to have their names brought up. Bible study will be uh, Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. All are, are welcome. We've, we're up to our fifth summer Bible study already. Uh, the following week is uh, Bible school, vacation Bible school. So we won't have a Bible study that week, but we will this coming week. And then we'll have one more uh, the week after Vacation Bible School. So if you'd like to well, come and join us, we'd love to have you join us. The Donnelly Family Singers will be coming on August 7th. That'll be here before you know it. So uh, we're looking forward to their service and song. Are there any other uh, announcements at this time? Anything else that's, uh, that's going on? Cheryl? Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. It has been very hot today. Yes. You know it's going to really get hot today, that's for sure. Yes. Anything else? Yeah. All right. We're ready for our brace on. going to play the guitar and let uh, Ryan lead this with his great voice. But the song is very appropriate for our theme today, which is uh, finding God's purpose in our life. And the way we do that is uh, by seeking the Lord and asking, seeking, knocking, trying to discover the path God wants us to go as individuals and as a church. So let's sing seeking first. Oh, 
Kids, we're just going to keep you in your seats uh, this morning. Again, I've got that bad cold, and I'm not going to share it with anybody. This morning, I'd like to talk to you uh, about going for it. Sometimes it's scary doing new things. For example, trying out for a new sport, like maybe soccer or uh, swimming or something like that, or going to a new school. If you've ever had to go to a new school, well, that can be scary. Or even a new church and going into a new Sunday school. Trying a, a new activity like ice skating might be scary for you for the first time trying it, not knowing what might happen. Or even like cutting the grass for the first time. When I think about trying something new, you know what I think about? It's like a door. And you wonder, what's on the other side of that door? What's going to happen if I go through that door and try this new thing? I know when I was a kid, I liked all kinds of different sports. I, I played sports in, in grade school, like basketball and baseball. And then me and my buddies, uh, we'd play out in the yard uh, football, and I even tried some soccer when I was a kid. So I went through all of those doors trying those sports. But then when I got to high school, I went out for track to see what that would be like. I was kind of afraid because I wasn't sure if I would do well there or not. But I tell you what, when I went through that door, I discovered, man, I really like this sport. All those other sports were fun, but this one was great, and it ended up, I, I ran the rest of my life, and I'm still running. I can remember, in college, I was trying to figure out what, what my pathway in life was, and I took a course called statistics. And in statistics, you had charts and graphs and math and all that kind of thing. You know what I discovered? I did not like statistics. <laughs> However, I did take a course in college called Creative Writing. Oh man, that was a fun course that made you use your imagination. And I, I loved that course. And I found out going through that door was the right door for me because I, I wrote a lot the rest of my life, sermons every week, uh, stories, books. I found out that was a great door for me. This is what I've discovered. Sometimes God takes us through a lot of different doors. And every one of those doors that we go through helps us to understand the direction God wants us to go in life. I think uh, when we're young, God wants us to try a lot of things to see what we're good at, whether it be art or music or sports what organizations that we'd like to belong to, like the Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts. Yeah, you have to go through those doors to find out if that's for you, if that's what God meant for you. Now, of course, God doesn't want us to go through a door that's going to be bad for us, so we, we've got to always keep connected to God as we pray about the different doors we go through. But there are a lot of things out there that God says, you know what? Go for it. Try it. That way you'll discover who you are. And so you young ones out there, don't be afraid if there's a, a, a door in front of you and you're not sure what's on the other side, but you feel like God does want you to go, go through that door. Because after you go through it, God will help you to discover whether that's for you or not. Maybe it's just an experience that God wants you to have. Maybe it's going to be a great door, and you'll enjoy that direction that that door takes you the rest of your life. Let's pray. Lord, there's so many doors that we go through in life, and sometimes we're afraid to go through them. But a lot of times you say, go for it. You need to go through that door, get that experience, and find out what it's like. Give us the, the strength and the courage, Lord, as we face the many doors in life, because as we go through them, we discover your purpose for our lives. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Knowing that we are flawed human beings, 
living in a fallen world. We come humbly before our holy God, and it is by God's grace through the Son that we can be restored and renewed. Please join me in the prayer of confession. We confess to you, O God, and before one another that we have sinned. We have allowed the stories and the news of the world around us to drain our hopes from us. We live as those who have no hope. We despair at the headlines, and we despair for the future of our own lives and families. We celebrate Easter and Pentecost, and then return to our lives to doubt that anything good will come out of this mess we call our world. Forgive our short-sightedness and our inability to focus on your faith in the one who raised Jesus from the dead. Out of death and the fear of the apostles, you brought forth a glorious power through your spirit. Help us to drink deeply again of that power and be your faithful, hopeful people. Amen. Take a moment now for your own personal prayer and confession. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's take time this morning to pass the peace of Christ to one another.
so uh, now she is recovering at, at Park Health, and then uh, she is going to have to have some kind of surgery on her sinuses because that was part of the problem. So we'll keep Linda in our uh, in our prayers. Any other uh, additions, uh, Linda? Joe, Ron's back in the hospital with pneumonia. Uh, Ron is yeah. in the hospital with pneumonia. Yeah. That reminds me, uh, Edna Morrison is in the hospital also with pneumonia. Uh, she had COVID and uh, she is having a hard time. Uh, well, she's 99 years old and has uh, other uh, problems like AFib and things like that. So uh, keep uh, Edna also in your prayers with pneumonia. Debbie? Joe, continue prayers for Patty Bennett. Um, she takes a couple of steps to the good and then she slides back again. So. Continue to pray for Patty Bennett, who's had some uh, very serious, very serious health problems uh, for a while now. So. Okay, anything else? Let's come before the Lord's evening prayer. Lord, we do thank you for this day and uh, we pray right now that. Uh, you would be with each and every person here and their families. Uh, this life can be challenging. All the things that are going around right now uh, can be uh, threatening to our lives. So watch over us and protect us, protect our young ones, our little ones. We are looking forward to the vacation Bible school, school starting in about a week. We pray for your blessings upon uh, that week and the teachers and the kids, draw families, uh, to us and continue to build this church through our youth. Uh, we, uh, we ask, Lord, that to be continue to move this church forward in the right direction. We think that uh, uh, there should be several new members joining us here in August, and I pray for your blessing on their lives as, as they continue to add to this church family. Well, we thank you also for the opportunity to lift up these people in prayer to you this morning. We think of uh, Ron, who's in the hospital right now in the moment. Be with him. Keep your healing hand upon him. Watch over Edna, suffering from COVID and also in the hospital with pneumonia. Be with her and watch over her. We continue to uh, <coughs> pray for these other people who are battling cancer. So many, Lord, be with them and watch over them. We think of uh, Sandra and Dale, Rich and Kim. We watch over uh, Dina and Philip. We lift up Jackson and Tom to you and Susie. Be with Danny. Lord, as they go through their treatments, may those treatments be effective. May the meds be effective. Watch over Tammy and Sally. We lift up Kathy to you and Gail. Be with Jean and Sharon and Juan. Lord, that as these days pass, may they uh, grow stronger. May your healing touch be upon them. We think of John and Tom, Jack and, and Marlene, and young Leo, and be with uh, Karen. Lord, some of these people have been declared cancer free, and we continue to pray you would sustain that healing. Those who are still going through that battle, go with them, Lord, give them strength. Continue to be with all our young people and uh, continue to bless their lives and the lives of this ministry uh, to our youth. And watch over Sophia, watch over Colton, watch over all of them. Protect their health. Protect them, Lord, uh, from uh, all that's going around in, in this world and continue to uh, guide them and their families. We lift up uh, Donna to you. Facing difficulties, we think of pain in her vision, be with her. These others with health problems, Nancy, Nancy and Luca. Continue to pray for Shirley and Randy and Peggy. We lift up Sue and Bill to you. Edna also, Lord, and Bill Bowen recovering from that stroke. Lift up our friend Doris to you and pray that you be with her. Patrick's dad, Mr. McCormick, Lord, be with him. Our children, Marie. David Porter, we continue to pray for him. Dana, back problem. Continue to be with Taylor, guiding his life. Ryan, who's 
going through rehab. Watch over our friend Jack. Continue to be with Dorothy and Celeste. And think of uh, Bill Thoburn, his uh, battle against Parkinson's, be with him. Watch over our friend Jane and her health. Watch over uh, Bruce, battling dementia. Think of Amy and uh, my brother-in-law Jim. We lift up uh, Betty to you and Scott. And watch over uh, Ron and, and Shana and their health problems. Think of Bill and uh, Joe Thompson and his heart problem. Be with uh, Lisa, her recovery from hip surgery. Vince, who is in uh, hospice. Uh, Bill and his health challenges. We continue to lift up uh, Patty Bennett to you, Lord, and uh, her health. Lord, she goes up and down. We pray, Lord, that you would surround her with your healing presence. Uh, be, be with Brian. We think of uh, Betty. And continue to lift her up to you, Lord. And watch over Linda where as she continues to recover. So, Lord, we thank you for all these people. And uh, now we uh, pray for this world and all that this world is going through. We pray, Lord, that uh, believers in this world would shine the light of your love brightly into this world, showing compassion, showing uh, uh, the, the wonders of your kingdom through our lives. Be with our military people and around the world, those people trying to uh, establish peace and maintain peace. There are war torn areas of this world, Lord, uh, that uh, need your, your guidance and help. Guide the leaders, help them to make wise decisions. We are living in difficult and dark times, Lord, so be with, be with each and every one of us. And now we uh, pray together the prayer that the Son of God taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as much we give to our debtors. And we give us not to temptation. But deliver us from evil, the land is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And uh, this time, let us honor the Lord with the giving of our tithes, our gifts, and our honor.
to us and the abundance you pour into our lives. We pray right now for your blessing on what was given this day, and I pray for your blessing on, on the givers. Fill their lives to overflowing. Continue to help them to be channels of blessings to, to others. Move through them, through this ministry, to make a positive difference in this community. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 138. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and uh, stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. May they sing of your ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is on high, he looks upon the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you, pre you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand you save me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. This ends the reading of the Old Testament. The New Testament reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 11. 5 through 13. Hear the word of God. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on the journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. Suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door's already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you Read because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. And this, right now we ask for a deeper understanding. We pray that your spirit would be our teacher and open up our eyes and our hearts to the principles that are held deeply within your word so that we might draw them out and understand them and apply them to our lives. And as we do, Lord, may you shape our characters by the power of your spirit and prepare us for that purpose to which you call us. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I looked up a definition for the word purpose and I found this one I really like. A person's sense of resolve and determination. And here's the example sentence they gave. There was a new sense of purpose in her step as she set off. I just picture that in my mind. This young lady has a new sense of purpose. She gets out of bed and boy, she steps forward, excited to, to move forward into her day. So I like that definition. I, I like that example sentence. To me, a person with a sense of purpose has a good reason to wake up in the morning and embrace the day. That perspective to move forward into your day 
with a clear purpose can make the difference between spinning your wills, floating aimlessly on a, on a windless sea, or setting off with enthusiasm and energy and hope. The important first step of a purposeful day, I believe, is a thankful heart. And I believe the psalmist who, who wrote Psalm 138 agrees with me. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple, and I will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. When I picture this psalmist waking up in the morning and step, stepping out of bed, I see him as praising God with his whole heart, realizing that the day was a gift from God. This psalmist, when, when he stepped out of bed, he knew that the day was a new opportunity to discover what God wanted him to do and where God wanted him to go. He appreciated that. And in his relationship with God, he was discovering what his purpose was in life. Psalm 138, 8. The Lord will fulfill His purpose for me. Your mercy, Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I'll repeat what he said there in the first part of that verse. The Lord will fulfill His purpose for me. The psalmist had confidence that the purpose, purpose that God gave to him was going to be made clear that path down which God wanted him to go was going to open up before him and he would see it. So when he woke up in, in the morning, he woke up with that thankful heart. He had an attitude of gratitude. He was uh, ready to move forward with purpose along that path because he wanted to accomplish what God wanted done in his life. Then we read this from that same Psalm, one, Psalm 138.3. When I called, you answered me and greatly emboldened me. So not only did the psalmist receive a vision of God's purpose for his life, God emboldened him. Now what does that mean? God emboldened him. Well, once he got out of bed with that thankful heart and started moving forward, he did not move forward half-heartedly to accomplish God's purpose. Will he moved forward boldly, ready to do, ready to act, ready to make what God wanted done happen? Listen to how Jesus instructed his disciples about finding God's purpose for their lives. Luke 11, 9 and 10. Jesus said, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Jesus reveals here that finding God's purpose through prayer is a very active process that involves asking, seeking, and knocking. And of course, asking is all about our interaction with God through prayer. Lord, I'm asking you to open my eyes. Help me to see the path you want me to follow. Help me to understand where you want me to go, what you want me to do. Give me a vision of what you want me to accomplish. And then you, and then you listen and you be sensitive to the Spirit of God as the Spirit of God moves in your lives and as things happen. In, in your life, God begins to show you the direction, the path, the door that God wants you to follow. And as God raises up these possibilities to you, the only way you're going to know what door to go through, the only way you're going to understand is to seek. And seeking may uh, involve a lot of things. Seeking may involve researching something where you feel God is, is leading you in that direction or going to an interview or talking to someone else and interviewing someone else. 
It may involve trying something new, studying the complexities of some option that is, that is before you, visiting certain places to discover certain things. Seeking can involve all kinds of things. Prayerful seeking is usually a journey of discovery that requires mental and often physical effort. So you cannot be a prayerful seeker if you sit back and do nothing. And then as you prayerfully seek, you will discover that you will arrive at certain doors. The psalmist said, God emboldened me to accomplish God's purpose. So when you get to one of these doors, you need to knock. I like how PowerPoint put knocking up there and left the G on the end. You need to knock. You don't know what awaits you on the other side of that door, but if God is leading you to that door, you need to knock. It might be rejection. It might be a deflection. It could be a door that you knock on that leads you to another door. It could be just the right door. It could be that, that door where you find that path of, of, of purpose that God is sending you down. The only way to find out it is to knock. But don't be surprised if there are doors of rejection and doors of, of deflection before you reach that door uh, of God's purpose. And the reason why is this. Every door God leads you to knock on offers an experience. And that experience can prepare you for the next door and the next door. Until God clearly shows you that path of purpose for your life. Then Jesus said this. He said, if then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Jesus said in this process, of seeking God's purpose through prayer, through seeking, through knocking, you've got a helper by your side. And that helper is the Holy Spirit. And as you go through this process, the Holy Spirit will confirm in your heart the direction that you're supposed to go. And that is exactly what happens when we reach that right door, when that door of God's purpose opens to us and we can clearly see that path. The Holy Spirit confirms that in our heart that we are moving in the right direction. So this process of seeking God's purpose through prayer may take time. You may have to knock on a lot of doors. God will probably require persistence from you. You might have to go through several experiences, and through those experiences, God begins shaping who you are, your character. But if you hang in there through that process, God will lead you down that right road that you will accomplish God's purpose. Not only does pursuing God's purpose through prayer work for an individual, but it also works for the church. When we as a body unite together, seeking the presence of the Holy Spirit, asking, knocking, God moves us forward along that path of God's will for our church, for our fellowship, and we begin to see new possibilities. We become energized. We become emboldened to seek those paths and to knock on those doors. So this morning, I confirm the scriptures. You can find the path of God's purpose for your life through prayer. A fellowship of believers can find God's purpose for their church through prayer. But the instruction Jesus gave to his disciples is prayer demands a process, asking, seeking, knocking. Those who go through this process 
will find that the door will open. Amen. Let us turn to our final hymn, 3A. 